Okay, in one of the other videos I posted, I talked about how empathy is a lousy thing to base your mor morality on. Why is that? Well, first of all, empathy can be so easily manipulated, and it can be so easily thrown out the window when the situation is different. Empathy is something that is innate to you up to a degree, but it can be easily manipulated and easily thrown out the window. I can't tell you how many times I've seen the starving kid on TV and I just don't care anymore. I'll make sick jokes to, to, to antagonize my wife. Honestly, I'll see starving kids on TV. I'll see news things on TV and I've seen them so many times that I've become dead to it. So I'll say sick things to, to, to antagonize my wife. Honestly. If you've ever been to New York City, you'll see immediately, you stay there for a month, you'll see immediately how empathy can die inside of you. This is just a natural part of life. You, yeah, you feel bad the first time you see a homeless person in New York City. You stay there for three weeks and you become just like everybody else in New York City. Walk right by it. Why? Because you got other things to do. You don't care. Heart can't bleed for every single solitary person you see. But that's not really where I'm going with this. Empathy is a lousy thing to base your morality on. Now, when we say Christianity is, is good, we're talking about the teachings of Jesus Christ. Everybody always forgets this in the moral thing. I am not an Old Testament Tonian. I am a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ, a Christian. Now, the question really is, are the teachings of Jesus Christ morally beneficial? Are they good? Are they a good thing to base your morality on? So, let's look at that. Because that's really the question. The other things are sidetracks. I'm not telling you to become a disciple of the Old Testament. I'm not telling you to become a Yahweh, you know, to become a disciple of Yahweh. Because that's really the way to, you know, to have peace in your heart and eternal life. I'm not telling I'm telling you Jesus Christ. So every sentence of the Old Testament is meant to be interpreted in the spirit and the intent of the New Testament. And the Bible even tells you, the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. So let's just look at the teachings of Jesus Christ. Are they morally good and are they beneficial? And let's start at the beginning. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew, first public utterances of Jesus, Sermon on the Mount. So you have to imagine that this is very, very, very important. And let's see what he actually teaches and what he actually says. So he opens up his mouth and he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, that's sentence number two. Sentence number two of the first public utterances of Jesus Christ. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So we can see right there, first and foremost in the heart of God is comforting the afflicted. First and foremost in the heart of God is comforting the afflicted. Let's look at sentence number three. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Oh, here's a good one. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. We're still in the first eight public utterances of Jesus Christ. One of those things is, is about comforting the afflicted. And one of those things is be a better, more merciful human being. But that seems to me right and good and true. Inarguably so, I, I might add. Next one. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The one after that. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Remember, these are the first public utterances of Jesus Christ. So God's priorities are that you be a peacemaker, that you be a merciful human being, that you purify your heart so that you're pure of heart. There's no evil in that. There's no negativity in that whatsoever. That seems almost pure good to me. That seems almost pure good to me. To me, it seems like the teachings of Jesus Christ, understood correctly and applied appropriately in your own life, are going to make you a better, more, mer more merciful, more compassionate, kinder human being. 
Those are the fruits that the, that the teachings are supposed to put inside of you. Now, I know in my own life that happened. Also happened for my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law came to visit me, um, saw the transformation in me, and became a Christian right away, immediately. Very, very well-educated human being, near genius, actually. Went to Wharton School of Finance, has spoken before the World Bank. Saw the transformation in me, and immediately became a practicing Christian. And everybody recognized the change in him right away. Said he was a better person. He was more merciful. He was kind. Christianity understood correctly is teaching you to be of service to other people. If you want to serve God, you're supposed to humble yourself and be of service to other people. So why, why does that happen so rarely? Because it's hard to do. That's the other thing that Christianity teaches you. That's the point. It's not natural to you. This is why empathy is a lousy thing to base your, your morality on. Why? Because it's natural to you to be a hard-hearted jerk, just like I said when I'm watching TV, or just like what happens when you walk through New York City. You can't bleed for every single person on the street. It just doesn't work like that. You start getting immune to it. You just don't care after a while. Your heart hardens. The reason why Christianity is not practiced so successfully, is practiced so unsuccessfully by so few people is that it is not organic to you. It is not natural. The Bible teaches you that the, the, the desires of your natural man are selfish. Gimme, 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 gimme. Eat, 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 drink, drink, drink. Me, me, it's all about me. That's, everybody knows that that's the way of the flesh. Everybody knows it. That's why the world is the way it is. That's what the Bible teaches. It also happens to be the God's honest truth. The reason why Christianity is so distorted out here in the world and you see Christians who don't represent it correctly is because it is hard to do. It isn't natural to a human being. Paul said, I place my body under subjection. You're supposed to be crucifying the flesh so that you can better serve your fellow man and so doing serve God. Now, who amongst you knows anybody like that? Yeah, outside of me. <laughs> no, not even me. Not even me. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I put myself in that category. I do not consider myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I press towards the mark of my eye calling. No, not even me. Yeah, I can be pretty cool and nice. All of us can be selfish, stupid jerks, period, including myself. Christianity is t trying to teach you how to crucify that side of yourself so you can be a humble, loving, warm-hearted servant of God. It isn't natural to a human being. There is a such a thing as a true Scotsman. And when you see a true Scotsman, a true Christian practicing, you'll know it right away. Why? Because they'll be beneficial to you. You trust them immediately. Because they'll be doing nothing but good. So the teachings of Jesus Christ are moral and good and right. I mean, I'll go on. I'll read you some of the other ones. You know, I'm sure I'll find some opinions to the contrary. <laughs> All I'm trying to point out, you know, the teachings of the Bible are good. The teachings of Jesus Christ are morally correct and right. The reason why, they, why you see them so, so infrequently in operation is they aren't natural to a human being. But the things that are natural to us are not good. This is why empathy is a lousy thing to base your morality on. First of all, there's no accountability. If I tell you I'm a Christian and I don't act Christian, you can hold me to account. You can say, hey, wait, your Bible says do X and you're doing, you're acting like an idiot. So you can hold me to account. Nobody can hold empathy to an account. And empathy so easily disappears, given the right set of circumstances. So easy for your empathy to disappear. So, that's just one little point. I'll go further with this, but that's all for now. Amen.